Well, good morning and welcome to the Simply Guy channel. Uh, we're back here for part two of our Soldier Bar Takeoff and Landing Challenge. And uh, let's just get right into it. Had a lot of fun in part one, but here we are picking up with uh, Pilatus PC6. Uh, this is a Porter, a Turbo Porter actually. And uh, wow, you just saw that that got out of Soldier Bar Idaho here really well. And uh, it's got a ton of carrying capacity here, turbo powered. Look at that, it's making the nice uh, reversal turn there and doesn't look like it's having any problem getting back in here to Soldier Bar. Take a look over here and just finish through the landing, but uh, very good plane. Really nice to add this one to the uh, hangar and we'll give that one a solid A. Just a nice flying plane. Here we go with the Cessna 208 B Grand Caravan. So the old Cessna Caravans, the Grand Caravan, jumps right off the Soldier Bar, no problem. This plane, it's got its cargo pot on it. Uh, very nice flying plane as well. Workhorse, you know, I can't really complain about it. And it is seemingly doing pretty well here in the back country. Uh, we're turned back around and headed back into 85U Soldier Bar. Full flaps. Power's coming out and it is just coasting down just beautifully. And nice little flare for landing. And touches down really nicely. So we're going to give an A for the Cessna 208 Grand Caravan as well. Here we go with the Daher. Kodiak 100 made right up in northern Idaho. Those who follow the channel have seen this one. Practice around the backcountry pretty well. I already know this one's going to be a good performer, but uh, we're putting it through the paces just like the other ones here so you can kind of see. And uh, really nice bush plane. Uh, turbo powered and carries quite a bit. Um, just a nice form factor for bush flying. As you can see there, just uh, kind of handling all of this very nicely from time to time on my flying here it's not just the plane it's some of the piloting too so i'll try to point out where i think uh the plane's doing better than my piloting on that particular run so but all overall here you can kind of see the uh daher kodiak 100 very nicely I'll give that one an a as well also from Daher, made over in uh, Tarbes, uh, France. This is the TBM 930. And I put this in here because when I was flying the TBM on my around the world trip, I was just surprised at how well it handled smaller strips. And I mean, it really flies well for a very fast plane. This will be one of the fastest entries we have in here, but let's see as we pop the gear back out as we're making our reversal turn. I was pretty confident that the TPM could handle this, so I threw it in this competition, and you can kind of see, I mean, it is not what you think of as a backcountry plane, for sure, but it does get in here to Soldier Bar, and we do have a bit of speed we gotta get, and we run off right to the end here, but it does stop in plenty, and well, it stops in time, so we give it a B minus. I mean, that's pretty good for for that plane. Now we're looking at a Diamond DA40NG. I think I've noted about the Diamond and their huge, big old long, I mean, their, their aerodynamics seems like it's a little more clean and maybe not ideally suited to this, but I thought we'd give the, a lot of different planes a try here so you can see the Diamond, uh, the DA40NG is, uh, hear a little bit of the stall warnings and stuff going off there so it is you know maybe headed more toward the edge of its capabilities here but it's doing okay and uh kind of see as it comes down it's uh give that a b minus not too bad um you know surprisingly Flight Design CTSL. I believe this one is made in Ukraine. Uh, and it may be 
paused right now, so I know it's part of it's manufactured there. So this one gets a little special attention today, uh, the CTSL and small little kind of a super light plane, but uh, got out just fine. Not a ton of power, didn't, but enough and it's handling very nicely, right? Didn't have to go out very far. It's turns very nicely, very tightly. Flaps in now, and uh, just a pretty nice flying plane. Uh, you know, again, not a, a lot of these planes I put in here are not necessarily what you think of backcountry planes, but they handle fine, so A- minus for the flight design CTSL. Hey, what would the competition be without some fun, other fun entries? I mean, North American Aviation's uh, Texan AT6N Texan. This one is a gunslinger model from the Reno Air Races. But, you know, big, huge radial engine in it. And you can see it's definitely got some power. And it really climbs. And we got the gear coming back out now. So I usually just take the gear up real quick just so we don't have any issues with the drag, just trying to climb up out of that first part. Pop it back down when we're doing our rounding turns. And you can see the gunslinger coming in. It's not doing too bad for a fighter plane, a uh, vintage fighter plane. And uh, as you can see, it does set down fairly well. It's got a little bit of horsepower and, you know, a little bit to handle getting out of there, but we give it a B. B. Pretty, pretty respectable. Oh, the North American Aviation. So this is the F-51D Mustang. This is Goldfinger uh, livery from uh, the Runaway Races. And this one, holy mud. <laughs> it just went south very soon. I mean, it's just got so much torque. Trying to get out of there just is like riding a bucking Bronco. Um, not an ideal bush plane. I thought I'd put it in there. It is uh, just Look at how beautiful that plane is. I mean, that is is got to be that is like one of my favorite planes of all time. I just have a special spot, like many people do, for the P51 or the F51D here. Um, you know, gorgeous. I love the gold finger livery as well. Uh, but I mean, this thing is just a disaster as a bush plane. It is no business being out here. Um, and you can see we're just going to fail it miserably because there I have tried so many times now I'm not saying you couldn't <laughs> get it in there but it's it's like you know if you have to try dozens of times to try to not plant it in the trees and crush yourself it's it's not supposed to be out here so failed the Robin Cap 10 okay this is a plane you know don't fly very often I've flown it once or twice and I remember that it I think it does well on short strips it's kind of a fun plane to fly I don't know why I don't fly it more often it's just you know uh, not what I'm familiar with so it's probably why but honestly pretty pretty cool flying plane this one's interesting <laughs> livery I don't know why I picked it but kind of a fun look um, but honestly it, it it does handle I think it's aerobatic too so I, I, I you know I was pleasantly surprised I'm gonna say that cap tends Kind of a dark horse there for me and uh, handled very nicely. Give it an A minus. Look at this beautiful plane, Beechcraft. It's a D18S Twin Beach. Hey, you know, I'm going to give a little bit of that to my pilotage on that particular one. I've come out of there a lot nicer than that with the Twin Beach, so I'm not going to hold everything accountable to the planes. Um, but just a beautiful plane. I mean, I love flying this plane. It's just, it's not very powerful, um, but it's, you know, serviceable, serviceable out here. It's not, uh, you know, maybe your, your top choice, but just a, it's just a beautiful thing to fly. It sounds so fun. They've done such a great job of the interiors. Beautiful. If you like that vintage look, which I do, then, it's, uh, it's just, a, just a cool, iconic plane here. That is doing its best in the backcountry. Trial here at Soldier Bar, and we'll see it come down and 
it'll get down okay. It's just at the edge there, stalling out. Oh, but now that's me. That's me with that bump there. I got a little slow and the wing dipped a bit. Uh, so I, it wasn't great. I gave it a C plus, but uh, I'm gonna take a little credit for some of the, it could have done a little better than that. I just didn't uh, execute properly. Here we go. It's kind of a fun one. I've been flying out here in the backcountry occasionally. And again, not one that I technically think is a backcountry plane, but the Cessna. The 337H Skymaster 2, Sky Smasher, Sky Thrasher, Sky, you know. Just a cool plane. One of my flight instructors used to fly one of these up from Detroit. Teach our classes, and it was always kind of fun to see it. It's a very unique plane. don't see a lot of them around, but uh, I'd love to fly one someday for real. This is as close as I got right now, and use, those of you who follow this channel have seen me take the Skymaster out to some pretty sketchy conditions and come into, uh, maybe it's Yellow Jacket or something, and uh, it, it does okay, so I put it in here. I've got my twins rolling a lot today, so I'll give this one a B minus. It, you know, does pretty well. Um, not the greatest, but it's it's fine. Diamond DA62. So I put another diamond in here. This is the twin uh, DA62. And I don't know what it is. I think it's these long skinny wings. They just in the power that diamond has. I don't think that it, it's probably a very efficient good, good plane. Just not quite spicy enough to be real effective out here. You can hear the stall warning going off too. I think that was happening on the other one too quite a bit. So you're really doing all you can to, you know, you, anyway, it's coming in kind of speedy and a little flat here. And it just doesn't have a ton of drag. Um, great flying plane in other aspects, but it gets in, give it a C plus, but uh, again, it's not one of our top performers for sure, but you know, there's the Diamond DA62. Here we go with uh, Beechcraft Baron G58, and uh, yep, there we go. We're off, you know, doing a little bit of a soft field takeoff there, which we're trying to do for all of these. So, um, yeah, you know, Baron, great plane to fly. Love flying it. Oh, you should see. I'm gonna probably post some videos. I had a there was a, a contest or a game or something that one, one of the, um, it was called On Air that I use for like, uh, you know, career mode, if you will. And they have some games around the holidays last year, a couple years ago, they had one where you just were flying, scud running. Oh, I'm gonna let this one touch down and give it a grade first. We'll talk about that. And yeah, B minus for that one. Um, anyway, I flew in that plane through Norway or some, just real low level in the dark. It was really fun. Great plane handled the winter very well. Here we are in another beach. This is the King Air 350i. And it gets out okay. This one is, uh, you know, a little more serious speed plane and, you know, more for commercial transport of passengers. I don't think I want to bring a load of passengers in. So I'm not sure this plane's sort of a waste in the back country, but give it a shot anyway. As we're having some fun here, and it's time for a sip of coffee while we're diving. <laughs> Pretty cool. Trying to make our course reversal in this plane. Mm. Good coffee. I'm not being sponsored by the coffee maker, so you won't know who it is, but any coffee makers out there I would like to sponsor this channel by all means give me a call <laughs> leave a comment if your coffee is good you too can sponsor the simply channel all right and you can see us stalling in there um, and then we hit the hump so that's that's part of the features of soldier bar there I don't judge that too harshly but a C minus for that plane it's just you know it made it but it's not great in the backcountry. Here, speaking of not being great in the backcountry, 
first thing we're going to learn here is that the afterburners are required and that would probably start a fire immediately and burn half of Idaho down so we're really not going to take the F-15 into the back country but you see we just by sheer power we were able to hurl ourselves off of Soldier Bar there with this plane. I don't have much hope here for landing it. Um, that's obviously not the mission of this particular plane, to be amazing in the backcountry. It does other things so well, so anyway, we're having fun here and trying a whole bunch of things. I have to put some stuff in there that are stretch goals, even if I think they're ridiculous. Um, I try to keep most of the contestants today in the, you know, interesting, reasonable range. Some are obviously good fits, but the Super Hornet's not one of them. <laughs> doing everything I can. It almost looks like a cobra maneuver here trying to trying to not stall and lose too much here. You know, and, and, and sadly you just you can't come in out you see the angle that I hit. I mean he might have been able to scrape along the turf there and but uh, F for the Super Hornet. Ah well finally we're gonna end up here with a fantastic entry. This is This is definitely the Twin Otter. Um, this is the De Havilland DHC-6 Twin Otter. And gets off very nicely. One, I just was so surprised by the performance of this plane. I really didn't know about how well it would handle. But it was interesting, my dad had a story uh, where he was out somewhere in Idaho and he was in a kind of a snowstorm. He was working on near the end of a kind of a runway or something and in the mountains and he heard something and man, if a, like he couldn't see hardly anything and one of these things came whisking over his head and touched down and landed and man, I got a chance to talk to the guy. He's like, wow, surprised that he and they were flying kind of radar or something they could go through and get in it was uh, at any rate that's that's my dad's story but what I found just flying this plane is that it can uh, it's amazing actually on the landing side um, you can kind of use your your thrust reversers or your prop you know way to reverse it there and just kind of as soon as you touch down, they're, they're reversing and you're just stopping on a dime. This plane, that's not the best landing by any stretch that I've done with this, but I've seen them come down and basically stick it. And what an incredible plane that one is. So I'm going to give it A plus to that. And let's go down here. We've got the whole rundown now. In 33rd place, the P 51 or the F 51 Mustang. Boeing, you can see the ones in red up there. They failed miserably. The Mooney was terrible. These are also including the first part, right? So you can see all of the, the various improving rankings we have there. Anything in kind of the lighter green there on down are good performers. And you can see our top four there, the De Havilland we just saw. The Got Gravel Savage Carbon, Kit Fox, Fox 2, Stage 2, and the top performer, the Zlin Shock Ultra. Those were our first part so we had some amazing entries obviously this is just my opinion you guys and I'm hoping you guys will you know weigh in on this and give me some thoughts uh, it's pretty hard to try to separate them like that but uh, and, you know it's fun nonetheless and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it get out there and do a lot of flying yourselves try some of these planes out and you'll have a great time out in the Idaho backcountry or wherever you want to fly um, Thanks a lot. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed, and we'll see you next time here on the Simply Guy channel.